Hello, hello, welcome back to Pictures Up, a channel about film and filmmaking. Today we are talking about filmmaking. More specifically, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, insight into my journey as a filmmaker recently and where that's been taking me. So every once in a while on this channel I give you a little behind the scenes breakdown of something I've done or I just talk to you about my accomplishments in the film world and the things that have helped me and led me to grow as a filmmaker. So that's what we're doing here today. Today we are talking about how I spent my summer. This is gonna be a pretty chill video. This is an unscripted video. This light needs to be angled this way a little more. And in just a second, we are going to be taking a little, uh, little field trip, if you will. I like that. You guys should think of me as like your fun teacher. That's pretty much me. We're gonna hop on a bus and we're gonna go on a little field trip to Sozo Bear Films. Let's start this story back uh, two years, two years ago. I was at the beach, 2019, and my uncle was like, hey, I go to church with this guy, he's actually the worship leader at our church, and he is a filmmaker during the week. His name is Luke, he's a really cool guy, I should introduce you to him, I know you love movies, I know you love filmmaking, I think you guys would really hit it off, maybe you can even get yourself a little internship with him. And you know, my uncle being as extra as he is, he got me a sticker from the guys, he got me uh, a t-shirt from one of their movies, which I still have, by the way. I watched a bunch of their videos and their short films. Anyway, of course, I never ended up getting an internship that summer or the summer after that, which was, of course, a uh, COVID summer nightmare. But the summer after that, this summer, 2021, it finally happened for me. My Uncle Will got me the phone number. I called Luke and we talked for like a straight hour about movies and my process and the movies that I love and the movies that he loves. And so the internship began. I had no idea what to expect from the job. I was pretty terrified, honestly. It's kind of funny thinking back on it and uh, and having known all those people pretty well for, for a little bit now and just how threatening they seemed at the time and how non-threatening they seem now. I mean, they are some of the nicest people I've ever met. But it was just naturally intimidating. It wasn't anything they were doing. It was just really a naturally intimidating situation. Uh, but within the first few minutes, we were joking, and then within the first hour, we were filming. And all of that footage that we shot ended up getting edited by me into a couple of vlogs for their new series, So's A Bear Vlogs, which you can check out on YouTube, link in the description. I'm really proud of the videos that I worked on and edited and the other ones suck. No, I'm just kidding, of course. I'm really proud of the series and its direction as a whole and I'm really proud that I got to play a part in it. So over the weeks after that, I basically just worked as a vlog editor for them. I believe the title I ended up officially getting was vlog producer. But in the process, I really learned a lot about editing and I learned a lot from being in a collaborative filmmaking environment. And I was just really impressed by the general uh, fun and enjoyable environment that was created at Sozo Bear Films and I was so glad to be a part of it and I think that there's no one better on this earth to talk about that environment and how that environment comes about than the guys of Sozo Bear Films themselves. So with that in mind I think it's time for a little field trip and we're gonna have a little conversation with them about my internship and my time there and what they do and all that good stuff so here we go. See, I don't really have a great idea of what I want to talk about, but I do just want to like kind of talk about what you guys do and uh, what the company is. So maybe uh, introduce yourselves, because I forgot your names. So. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> My name's Brad Kennedy. I'm one of the co-founders, uh, co-owners of Sozo Bear Films. Can I redo that? Don't be I too think. excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me, let me. Okay, so hey, what's up? My name is Brad Kennedy. Uh, Brad, I'm... you did not just do that. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? You did the hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brad Kennedy. <laughs> We're YouTubers. I work in the youth group. Like, Look, be excited, but don't be YouTube level. Okay, excited. what's up? It's your boy. <laughs> it's your boy. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. You know that bell right there. Click it. Pictures up. <laughs> You're watching pictures up. <laughs> I don't know why I got like New York. Yeah, you got very New York. <laughs> Go call your mom, tell her you love her. Hey, my name's Luke Pilgrim. I'm one of the co-founders of Sozo Bear Films. 
Hey, I'm Brad Kennedy. I'm one of the co-founders of Sozo Bear Films. Hey, I'm Ellis Tree, CEO of Sozo Bear <laughs> Films. Well, I do visual effects, I edit, and I basically run the entire business on my own. He's very good. Yeah. He kind of handles everything. I, I take naps during the day a lot. And <laughs> it's really a stressful position. But they just they wake me up if they need something filmed, and then the rest of the time I just sleep. If we need a TikTok, we call Luke. Otherwise, he <laughs> yeah. goes back into the cave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm man. meditating, coming up with TikTok ideas. TikTok is, is a big thing to talk about. That's not, or, or let's talk about, before we get to TikTok, like what do you guys do generally? What have you done up to that point? Because TikTok's a more recent yeah. development for you. Like uh, just as a company? Yeah, just as a company. Yeah. I mean, we make short films. Uh, commercials, music videos, documentary promotional films, and original shorts. Yeah, we tend to do a lot of science fiction. Uh, I'd say that's kind of our bread niche, and butter. our bread and butter. We love we love sci-fi, so we make a lot of sci-fi shorts. Um, and then, yeah, we get to make really fun commercials too, and music videos. I've got to be on set for one of the one of your music videos, and uh, and that was just. Uh, Really cool experience. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sounds like you enjoyed. It. Sounds like you really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. Oh, that was just a. I just realized that really? sentence was going nowhere. <laughs> it was just a really cool experience. It was, it was that cool. Was just <laughs> really fun. <laughs> yeah, it was um, really fun. <laughs> I had a good time. You guys are the best or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so recently you've also been branching into uh, doing TikTok. I know there's a whole video up on their YouTube channel, a whole vlog about your success on TikTok. Which you edited. Which I edited. So During your internship here. Yes, extra reasons to go check it out. It's pretty awesome. We got into TikTok this year. Uh, mostly because I forced everyone into it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I thought it was going to be fun, and I thought it was going to be successful, and it's well, been really cool. Well, let's set the record straight. There wasn't a lot of forcing from me. <laughs> okay, you're right. You were like, okay, uh, let's do a TikTok. And I was like, cool, I'm in. This sounds awesome. That's true. It was he more was so me. I believed the entire time that uh, it was going to be successful. Brad didn't believe it was going to be successful hey, at all. all right, done my yeah, yeah, I know, but he didn't believe it. I want everyone to know for the record, I believed in it. To be fair, that's warranted because it's like, to, you know, I, I, business that, make some money. TikTok, high possibility of not going anywhere. And on so. that at that point too, all we knew of TikTok was like t TikTok dances. We didn't know it could also be an app for like create a creative outlet, and you could make really cool short. You know, like basically short films. They just happen to be vertical aspect ratio. So one thing I want to ask about, because it's, it's a lot of what my channel focuses on, is just uh, how I'm growing as a filmmaker and how I'm learning and uh, and the experiences that are shaping that. And this has been a big one. Mm -hmm. And so what for you guys were like the early on experiences when you were in, around the stage I'm in? Like what, what kind of got like you into 16? it? Just in your development of <laughs> and, yeah, like and just learning like, film. And like and how, how did you guys kind of develop? He's just a little ahead point? of where we were at yeah, 16. For sure. But, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'd say I'd say <laughs> this is like talking to Anakin Skywalker, and we're the Council of Jedi's, and we know he's all powerful. He's gonna become like evil. Going, I hope not. Don't become evil. Don't, don't, use don't your kill the evil. younglings. Don't use your power for evil, dude. I, I mean, I did some stuff in high school, you know, but mostly it was like uh, Brad and I both. We've talked about this a bunch of times, but doing like stop motion mm -hmm. as a kid all that stuff you know using a camcorder playing around Same. that's like the early days of like just realizing you can film stuff i was obsessed with movies growing up my parents had a movie rental business so i was just exposed to it all the time like probably too much you know what i mean they showed me like all the great movies at a really young age which i think it was impressed it made a big impression on me I, I started out making music videos that was really how i got into it and that's where i was like i think i have like an eye for this because i just understood naturally what shots should look like and that was like the first time you really like don't let me say this for you but i feel like making something that you're like okay i'm really proud of this i think i did a really uh, good job right yeah i mean like with my music i felt that way and stuff yeah. but like yeah for like making a video or something yeah our first the first music videos for my band were probably like where i was like oh this is really cool it was really fun too because it was outside of what I was trying to do for a living, which was mm -hmm. play music at that time, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just a fun outlet. And later on, when I decided to go back to college, I was like, I'm going to study film and actually go for it. And now mm -hmm. it's like I make a living making videos. So yeah. it's kind of gone full circle, I guess. My edits for you guys are always those sorts of projects where like I, I, I put them down. It's like that, that was really good. You know, even if yeah. it's not like, you know, that mm -hmm. was. That was my magnum opus, you know. It's, right. it's like mm -hmm. that. That's a. I mean, that's a really good 
yeah uh, that's really good work i did on that i i think that's what makes us all stronger is you do an edit and then everyone else gets to look at it and then go oh i think this could be a little bit better mm -hmm. and, and you can really tell how you're developing and learning when like those tweaks are becoming less and less because yeah. you're kind of you know figuring out okay this is what kind of fits the style you know what i'm needing to do i would say the best piece of advice too is to just try the idea if someone gives mm -hmm. you an idea because like i know even like for you when you've come in here and we might say like try doing this and you uh, you kind of feel like oh, i don't know i don't know if that'll work right and so you may have like a little pushback on it but if you just try it and see mm -hmm. a lot of times it either does work or you tried it and it didn't work and the yeah. person who suggested it sees it didn't work being able to to be in a in a really collaborative filmmaking and, and mm -hmm. video producing environment is is new for me it's been mostly me on my own at, at least in like post-production yeah. mm -hmm. stages of things like I, I have people on set helping mm -hmm. and everything but and and i have people who help me write uh, and, right usually but um for editing and stuff like that i never worked with anybody or was that hard to get accustomed to it was it was different to get accustomed to and i i sort of think it was like it was almost like I spoke a different language that I was only like semi fluent in and mm. I had never talked to anybody who could speak it and then I'm here and you guys are like super fluent. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's weird. It's like I'm not used to anybody knowing anything about it and then I get here and you guys know way more about it than I do. And right. that was just such a like a flip of what I'm used to the people uh -huh. around me knowing yeah. <laughs> about uh about what I do. And it and it was a, a welcome surprise too, because it's like I mean I can grow from this yeah better what, than what did you think when you <clears throat> like coming in did it meet your expectations or were you just... I had no idea what to expect we talked for a long time when i first called you that first like phone call we talked for like an hour yeah so that yeah. was and i was like i had a really good feeling about you then because i mean i mean so just for the audience um your uncle is a friend of mine will and will told me about you but see that we get stuff like that all the time where people are like my cousin is edits videos or whatever and we already had three in three interns at the time so we were like and i told him i was like well we're booked up this summer i was like does he have send me some examples and so he sent me one of your videos and he told me how old you are and stuff too and i, I watched it and i was like really impressed because i was like dang this kid seems to understand pacing really well. And I showed Brad the video mm -hmm. and he was like, cool. And we were like, let's. <laughs> Brad was like, yeah, this is cool. I agree with Luke. Like your pacing was really good. Just seeing what you're able to do even before being here at your age. I don't want to say like we played a huge part because I don't think we did. I think if anything, we kind of helped, you know, refine what was already there. Yeah, I think your own natural like hunger for film yeah kind of drives like your ability right because yeah. you're going home and you're still editing you're still making content yeah. like it's not just doing yeah. it here you shot a whole nother music video when we were shooting a music the same video. week yeah. yeah same the day before and after yeah. the amy ray music video shoot i shot mine i mean that was a crazy week but it's such a fun week mm -hmm. uh, yeah and super tiring i remember the first day on set <laughs> was so long yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I had never been on set for that many hours before and it didn't help that we had blacked out all the windows yeah so you my can't brain, see yeah. the day so my, my brain is telling me hey it's nighttime you should be asleep <laughs> and it's been telling me that for like 10 hours yeah. Well, and, <laughs> yeah. and that's the crazy thing that's not the longest day we've ever done nope. that was a sh kind of that a short is... day compared to like yep. a lot of times on like short film shoots there'll be 12 14 our, our hours. record's like 15 i think yeah which was too much which was <laughs> too many hours which was a mistake yeah so will told me to give you a call or everything he showed you know me and brad watched it we saw definitely there's some potential in the edit then i call you and yeah we talked for like an hour and i was like i definitely had a good feeling about you just in terms of like you didn't seem like an immature kid. You seemed like you had a good head on your shoulders, all that stuff. And I thought, I felt like you would definitely fit in here in the culture. And just the first week you had edited like two edits or something, or like the first mm -hmm. two weeks you had done two edits. I don't remember, yeah, but it was really like fast. And that's really impressive because, uh, I don't know, being able to edit quickly is a is a skill set that you need. Yes. You know, being able to just make a decision and cut it, or make a decision and keep moving. That's that. I mean, you needed someone to come in and edit YouTube vlogs. And that's, I mean, not vlogs exactly, but that's very much 
kind of what I what I have done a lot of and like you know I mean I I, I need to get this up tomorrow night I I'll just I guess I'll just shoot it and pull an all-nighter editing mm -hmm. you know it's it's when you've got school and like crazy amounts of tests going on and everything but you still want to get a video up on a certain day mm -hmm. that's just kind of what you do and so I I've, I've been kind of um, just I've kind of just really conditioned myself I guess to to edit very quickly stuff like that it's it's so fun and I think that's I can tell here with you guys that you have fun doing it too you have fun editing videos i mean even if you've even if you've been working on the same project for like two weeks straight but, and you're but, starting to get tired of it in the but interviews that's the and thing. everything it's like i think with any project especially the more you get into the commercial side of things like they're not always going to be that passion project that you want to get up and make every day but you got to find that aspect of it that you really like i i think that's just a, a general thing that's true about the office here is that I, I think you guys sort of um, understand that when you're doing creative things it needs to be fun at least in some way and you need to kind of have fun in the office because if you're just I mean if everybody's bored all the time you're not mm -hmm. gonna get good creative results mm -hmm. and you're not gonna enjoy it and why not enjoy it mm -hmm. yeah. and that uh, seems like and that's that's one of my favorite parts about working here because I mean I, I, I don't know if I would really you know, get that working at like a fast food restaurant or something this summer yeah. you know so i'm not yeah. only doing what i love i'm also like having a good time every day and there's there's inside jokes and just a just a general really good sense of um, right you're surrounded by people who love what they do mm -hmm. and that pushes you to be better it pushes you to enjoy what you do more and makes you better all around and uh, at the end of the day, like we we don't want anybody here if they don't love it. It's like it, it would be a disservice to them. There's times you have to like push yourself because the edit is like Brad was saying, it's like not the most fun edit or mm -hmm. something or whatever. But there's usually something really cool about every edit. This isn't the type of environment to get so hung up on productivity that you like lose sight yeah. of people's overall well-being and i think yeah. everyone's voice matters too and like opinion matters here which is really cool because you wouldn't Other get that in like a, <laughs> thank you <laughs> so i mean to wrap this up i think i've grown a lot being here and um and a lot of it's in the little things in the in the little uh editing tips and everything and just having seen you guys shoot a project and and watching how you do it and and what the process looks like for professionals but then beyond that and those little things it's it's also just that that bigger uh, more general being in a mm -hmm. collaborative environment which is something i'm totally new to or was before before this and it's been a, an incredible environment and i think it's really great and i think like we were talking about you guys make it great with that idea of uh of it being more of a community and uh being able to have fun and finding the reason to have fun in every every day and every edit and uh and and that's just something you guys are really great about is making it fun and making it productive as well so yeah cool man well we hope to have you back yeah and, hope so uh, come back yeah. yeah i know you gotta go to high school and stuff yeah but, well, uh, <laughs> school sucks. <laughs> no. you gotta go to high school just kidding you have to go to yeah you have to finish your high finish, school finish school but, but yes, yeah, you got a spot here. But when you got it's a spot over, here waiting for you for sure. Whenever right. you want. <laughs> okay, let's well, hug it out. Great. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Okay, <laughs> one okay. final quiz. Yeah. Say a line. Let's see where <laughs> it's from. Okay. From a movie or from a song? Either or. You know the two options. She worked for Mr. Cacciatore down on Sullivan Street, across from the medical center, something like that. That's Big Lebowski. <laughs> no, it's not. Is it not? Moving Big out by Billy Joel. <laughs> God, no other option. He works at Mr. Cacciatore's down on Sullivan Street. His across name is from Anthony. The medical Center. It didn't yeah. even sound lyrical, so I, I assumed know, it's it was such just a, a weird movie line. line. <laughs> God, it's always Billy Joel or Big Lebowski here. That's Every it, time. I think there's very little for me to say that wasn't said in that video, but there are a couple of things. Luke, Brad, Ellis, uh, Amanda, Andrew, Jake, all you people who worked with me at Sozo Bear Films, uh, if you're watching this, and I know most of you are, you guys have seriously played a huge role 
in my growth and development as a filmmaker. Thank you so much to Luke and Brad in particular for taking a chance on me and uh, letting me be a part of the team. It really means a lot to me. And it truly is a team. I mean, you can kind of say that about any working environment, but this didn't just feel like some sort of like throwaway teenage summer job. This was actually something that I gleaned a lot from and learned a lot from, and I'm grateful to have had the experience. And I'm grateful for all the merch, too. Uh, recently, my short film K, which is on this channel if you haven't seen it, link in description if you want to go check it out. My short film K actually screened at Sozo Bear Presents A Night at the Movies, which is the film festival that Sozo Bear Films puts on annually. That was an insane experience. The first time I ever got to see something that I made play on a theater screen in front of people, which is such a big deal to me. I will talk all about that and more in that vlog coming up, but in next week's video we're going to be talking about how I pulled off shooting an arcade commercial, which is a videography job that I was very fortunate to land recently. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna break down my process on that. It was a really good time. So stay tuned. I'm gonna keep uploading weekly until Christmas. That's my goal. That's my big life goal right now is that I want to get weekly uploads out until Christmas and then I'll probably take a week off or so around that time. So yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And until then, I'm Sam Morgan and this is Pictures Up.